Between me and you, it's the hey. me, uh, and the gang hey. for me. Between me and you, it's the yeah. for me. Between me and you, it's the Joseph got the vibe. Money on my mind, I be on my own time. Hey. The mood is great. Good vibes on me, man. Good vibes on me. Welcome, 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 welcome back. We are live from the living room. Um, I have another friend of mine. Um, I know some very interesting people in my life. And this guy is no different from the others. Patrick Gregory Daniels. We met, what, maybe 2014, 15, somewhere in there. We've been cool ever since. Every time we talk, it's great energy. Um, we need to exchange information and just talk positivity and speak life into each other. This man's an all-around artist, photography, videography, um, tuba, producer, just all, like, just name art. When you think art, think of, think of Patrick. And live from the living room, got him on the couch. Hey man, praise God, man. I'm thankful, man. He just gave me a lot of reasons to like not have fear and things. So my my philosophy behind it is that you know a lot of people that you know I'm like, hey man, you should play an instrument. They're like, uh, you know, I can't play anything. But really, all all music stuff is, and all that stuff is, it's just being able to have the ability to just make it kind of say what you want it to say lending yourself to the ability to just communicate with it. So, yeah. you know, I just I just try to get rid of fear and just use, you know, these instruments and different tools to mm. express differently. Because the more differently you can do, you know, the more, it's like putting yourself in a different country. If you can put yourself in more different places and spaces, then you get an opportunity to see, you know, how you really can handle expressing, you know, through the different languages, how you use instruments or tools. One thing that I've always noticed about you, about you, and probably, most, a lot of Atlanta guys I've, I've met, you guys have a very unique sense of style where you might blend different things that may look strange to other people in other regions of the country, but you guys make it work, and it's just all around dope. What inspires your personal style? Andre 3000. You know what's funny? You know what's funny? I, I, uh, when I, you know, you have you ever have a conversation with um with somebody and you probably you trying to explain who a person is to you, what they represent, or who they maybe favor. Right. I always draw on Andre three thousand um, when, when I when I think about you, um, your your eccentric style, positive energy, and just like it, overall exuberance. I appreciate it, man. It's I let probably in like later age I came up with a philosophy that you know might. Some might agree with it, some might. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's like what's home to you, what's the roots and the tree for you. But for me, you know, um, I feel like every dude is, you know, essentially from, you know, Atlanta ends up being two kind of ways. And it's not an insult on Big Boy, but he does have his youthful boyish ways mm -hmm. in terms of like his style and his articulation skills. So yeah. my philosophy is that you either continue to wear the you know, the caps and the grill and the chains and stuff, and you remain a big boy, mm -hmm. or you graduate and become a three a three stacks. And it's not to say that... With the evolution of... Right, yeah. of, of expression. Yeah. Because they, you know, they, you can see both of them in one another. It's just mm -hmm. those eccentric expressions, which we call them eccentric expressions, but really it's just like the difference between one guy that's willing to skydive and somebody that's not going to do that shit at all. Yeah. Big Boy probably is not going to do that shit at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andre is probably going to do that shit and then make a song about it. Yeah. And then while he, you know what I'm saying, evolves to skydive, he's probably going to also realize I need to evolve and learn how to use a new in instrument to express this idea. Because it's, it's beyond, <laughs> it's beyond drums yeah, and trap yeah. drums and it's yeah. 808s. <laughs> nice. When, when, did, when did you, when did you formulate that, that, part of your mind that said, okay, I'm evolving, I'm separating myself from the old version of me? Uh, I would say, like, middle school, voluntarily, middle school, involuntarily, like, four years old, like, taking drum lessons. So, mm -hmm. honestly, honestly, my mom kind of did it to me because she was a musician, so she just... Oh, you come from a music household? Yeah. Okay. So, like, I take after her. My grandmother was a, a choir director, like, it's impressive to see somebody today because you don't see it often, but it's impressive to see somebody sitting at a piano or an organ, play, 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 sing, 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 direct the choir, flip the page, yeah. keep on playing, mm -hmm. keep singing, and flip the page. Not to mention this is at church, but it's also happening in the house yeah. after dinner. Grandmama's like getting down, hitting the pedals, doing all that stuff. Oh, so, you know, to see that stuff, and, and you know, I used to 
I was just thinking piano was like pretty lame. I thought it was really lame. And that's I think favorite. it's probably the most universal outside of drums. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's more um, for I guess more so for black people or people of color. But I, I think piano, like as far as doing different things with production, performance, being able to utilize it in so many different ways as far as just being useful as doing gigs, I think the piano is probably the most useful thing. And even yeah. if you don't use it to gig, it, every, I don't know if you know this, but there's been a study that um, when children that study, that take uh, music, it's something about knowing, all, learning all the notes and the drums and the measures um, that makes them perform better in math and science. So true, man. I always used to say back in school that I wasn't that good at math and all those different things. It's just that I'm good at those things in that totally different perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, because music is music is all that. It's nothing but you know numbers and, and, and sequences of going from here to there. And, you know, you might be playing like odd. You might be playing odd. Um, you know, you might go from a one to a three. You might go from you know C to E. Mm -hmm. You know, you might go excuse me, from E to, to G or something like that, yeah. or if you're like spicing it up or something like that, you might, you know, make it's one of those a half step or it's something. Rhythm, it's rhythm in a math. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's also, uh, it's also some, some heavy decision making and psychology involved in it because it's coming at a tempo. Yeah. And while it's coming at a tempo, you either make the decision to play it or you don't make the decision to play it. I like, I like, the, I like that you, the fact that you brought up psychology. I'm forgetting the story in which I read, but there is a certain form, there's a formula to pop music, but things and not not quote unquote like pop sound, but things that have performed well in pop charts. There seems to be a certain chord cadence and uh, riff that people are using that mm -hmm. um, that is stand out and it's always been consistent. I think they I think in the long form um, of the article, the research of it, rather. I think it went back maybe 50, like 50 years. So five decades and all, like though all the sounds have changed, the, the uh, subject matter, uh, the, prom the prominent sounds, um, there's certain things at the core of it, it's always the same. But it's based, yeah. it's based, on, based on the math, the I, formula. I do, recall, I do recall certain scales being used repetitively. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, we, we all know like C major, Same concept with lobster. Yeah, you know. And so the one thing, 
this is one thing I really love about having a podcast and inviting people that I know. You never know where the conversation is going to go. It was just a, I thought he was just being funny for the sake of saying we're talking about different ways of making burgers to remix something that you do to make it uh, not so monotonous, make it not so monotonous. This man just said he made shrimp burgers <laughs> and binding agents and <laughs> involved in the process. So I think I'm just a maker, man. Yeah. I don't even know. That's why you were asking. It's like, yeah, I got, I got to generalize it. Yeah, you know, to, really to artistry. You know, because it's, it's it's painting, it's it's food, it's clothing, it's branding. Do fifty different things and wear the same color mm-hmm. in those outfits, and you go back and look at the Instagram post, and it feels like a vibe because you've done ninety different things in different in in the same color. Yeah. So now it looks like it's together. I know that we always talk about it. mm-hmm. it's always growth change and, and even the move back to the artistry and the stuff. <laughs> which is very important um, and it's for me too but yeah we focus well, well one thing I will say that women do better amongst themselves is they communicate a lot better than men do I think men are getting better now mm-hmm. because it's becoming more accepted and we have more Platforms that's, that's that are encouraging men to talk about the difficult things outside of um, surface level politics, mm-hmm. um, mundane uh, you know objectification of you know women and things like sports and music and stuff like that. Right, right. We, we're we're coming to a, we're coming to a place where we dive deeper into different situations. But you and I are always have had a, a, a um, relationship in which we would go beyond that. Um, and, and going back to the artistry and, and creating. Um, I want to talk about what do you draw for your as your what do you use as your muse or your inspiration to create? <clears throat> Reason why I ask is because a lot of my favorite artists mm-hmm. they usually draw off pain drama that makes the best art for them as their the um, their sales or their general popularity has grown based on that. Mm-hmm. Um, example, uh, Adele, when she's in Heartbreak, Heartbreak Ballads. Um, T.I., when he's in a beef, he made his best work. When they're not in the drama, it's hard for them, it seems like it's hard for them to sustain that success mm-hmm. because it's not what, it's just not their pocket. <clears throat> so, in, 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 in referring back to you and your artistry, what do you draw off of to new things. Um, you know, there's a present, a past, and a future to all a conversation. Currently, I'm drawn off of, uh, off of spirit. And specifically, when I talk about spirit, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking about competitive spirit. Um, hmm. You know, I started off obviously in, you know... Uh, so you compete with yourself or other people or what? Well, I want to go, I want to go there. But your 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 mind is already detected step three. But I want to say I want to say that step two, step two is starting off actually with a dream of being an NBA basketball player. Okay. But not getting um, you know the benefit of the favoritism mm-hmm. because my parents were in the, in the stands yeah. pestering the coach to put me in. Yeah, yeah. So I'm on air alert, dunking, jumping out the gym. Shed and I will be something completely different. Yeah. Step two. 
step three is realizing as a grown man, because you beat me to the point, you saw where I was going before I got there. But step three is once you get pulled out of that institutions of higher learning, there are no competition people besides you that you can see. You can't see anybody else. So you have to pull on the, the weakness in your own body, which is saying, okay, at the end of the day, I don't feel like doing this because I've been doing all this and that all day long. Yeah. I want to just chill and lay down or relax or whatever. But that's that's literally if you pull that voice outside of yourself, lend it a body and put it on the line of scrimmage right beside you. taught me how to be honest with myself, how to put myself more out there. Um, she had an unhealthy, uh, unhealthy ego. Um, she has shared the same sign with like Kanye West and Kendrick Lamar, all of these people are Gemini's. And uh, you know, not to knock them at all, but just versions of everything. Yeah. And so she thought the world of herself as she was turning herself into that. She wasn't that yet, so she lacked oh, okay, that. Okay. She lacked that. She wanted threshold. the privilege of the of the gold. Yet she wanted she wanted the privilege and the accolades of um, before you even been achieved. Right. Treat basically treat me like a champion before I won the championship. And yeah, absolutely, exactly. While acting as such, yeah. but her actions weren't mirroring those things. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's not to knock that. And I, I and, and I digress because the you know the question the question at hand is. How did you, like, what did you, you know, what did you pull on in order to, in order to create and everything? And so there's, there's stories that lie within all of us. And so my stories that I've yet to tell are the stories that need to find themselves on the next album. Men in domestically violent situations with entitled, entitled women with scarred pasts because their mothers were scarred by heavily authoritative men with, you know what I'm saying, in the community using their authority and becoming violent. Therefore, the only thing they've learned in order, in order to operate through life is violence. Privately, because it's not publicly accepted. Right. So you try to keep it, you try to keep it on the low low, mm-hmm. but really this is like this is like how you operate. So it's telling that telling stories that they're they're embarrassing. It goes back to what you were saying. Yeah. You're talking about men don't articulate on these types of levels because it wasn't acceptable. Right. Well there's all these stories inside of me that are Know, I have to practice. I'm practicing right now. I'm practicing saying it publicly to you. Yeah. Now it becomes more okay for me to say it once I finally beat that dude on the on the you know <laughs> on the suicide. Now yeah. I'm ready to say it because I practice saying it. And yeah. it, and you give me the platform to get it out. Yeah. So you're engaged now. How long have you been engaged now? About a year and a half. Yeah. About a year and a half. Congratulations, son. Hey, thank you. Um, Shanoa Murray. <laughs> Daniels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so what did you learn from your last relationship that made you successful in this one? Go out fun places, take uh, and when I say go out fun places, I mean like, oh, actually, better than that. Do not date. Introduce people to your lifestyle because dating is what you do to keep things spiced up. Dating, dating is the movies and the, and the et cetera, you know what I mean? I like that. But in order to get the great relationship that you, the great relationship that I have in your own version, you have to introduce um, the fact that, the fact that you love beauty, you love slim, thick women um, that look a certain type of way and this is your aesthetic of a female, whatever your aesthetic may be, yeah. these things have to be kept up. So I, I we had, we, we went out and spent time together. I invited her to the gym with me. I was 
working on my career, you know about that. Yeah, yeah. I invited her to, I go on Eventbrite and beat their free events up. We go to credit building seminars together. We went to a real estate buying seminar, like we were going to buy a house together. We were just sitting in front of them learning yeah. everything that they talk about. Mm -hmm. We went to church together. I went to her church, she visited my church. It wasn't like a big thing. It's like, when you're by yourself, start having all the habits of the person you want to become when that person is around. And then when they're around, you introduce them to the lifestyle. Come to the gym with me, go to church with me, go here. Because while you're introducing them, it's not like, okay, I want to do something special because I want to be with you. Yeah. It's like, this is what I already do and I want you to come with me. And yeah. guess what happens? They either don't want to do it and they say a bunch of stuff or they ask you questions that seem apprehensive of this situation. Yeah. And now you know that this person does not, they're not fully yoked. They don't fit in your lifestyle. It's, 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 it's up to you whether or not you want to try to force their I like, I force like them it. into the box. Yeah. If they're certain, they're square, and you're trying to fit them in the circle, then it's your problem later on when you find out that, like in my past relationship, she want to smoke weed all the time but got financial problems. Yeah. At the end of the day, even when I used to do that every now and then, that was the first thing that was going to get dropped if I was having financial issues. But you have people in the world that can't let their vices go mm -hmm. in order to live a meaningful life. Life is going to the place that they want to be. Yeah. So a lot of people haven't accepted where they want to be enough to change their current actions to actually get there. One one thing that I like that you brought up with the introducing them to the lifestyle, I, I really enjoy that. I I really enjoy that because there's no change of because um, it seems the way people date nowadays mm -hmm. is. show you get a show and you, you you get your best face you put on your best clothes and go to the interview and try to wow them to get the job and then you get the job and you're like i don't know microsoft excel <laughs> so and it basically puts you in a position where you either have to learn to adapt on the fly because you misrepresented yourself or you have to come to grips and say i cannot i can no i cannot longer sustain what i gave you to get you and you have to either accept that or i have to just basically um, less than because you're gonna, you know, as a man, um, if a woman walks away from you from a life, especially for whatever reason, a lot of you can say probably financial would probably be the biggest thing, uh, mm -hmm. depending on the type of man that you are. Me personally, from a financial standpoint, uh, I want to be a provider, I want to help you know, take care of the things that I'm so I feel like I'm supposed to take care of as a man. So if I lose a woman based on that, that hurts me in a different way. I know what you mean because I, I have a faulty representation of what manhood was in my life. I say my last relationship, I'm talking about like not just that, I'm saying that that was the, that was the milestone where it changed, yeah. but it existed all before that, yeah. and it was that, as a man, what really makes a man a man is enduring, being able to endure the most hardships. So, ah. the thing you said about having a lifestyle that you can't sustain, mm -hmm. I got together with somebody that was projecting this $3,500 rent New York lifestyle and wanting to be sustained by this provider person and her idea was doing, being able to be in a, a situation ship where this person affords me everything I don't have in order to enable me to be able to do all the things that I want to be doing, uh, you know, in terms of my purpose and so my passion. So she dated somebody, I'm, I'm assuming she had dated somebody that either had a lot of money or a much older man? Second one. Second one, so okay, so he was a lot more well established, so when she got to you, the expectation. The, age, the expectation has been put up there. Totally. And, and I'm running, trying to reach reach the little dude in the in the insurance commercial, <laughs> throwing the thing, throwing the dollar bill. Gotcha. You know, and it's so. What was she doing that? Well, I don't say it like that because I don't want to frame it in that sense. Mm -hmm. And that was funny. I always say this. I do not want to have a relationship show or dating show. Yeah. But yeah. but I think this goes beyond just men and women in relationships because it speaks to something different. Yeah, everything is everything. Um, what what was she doing to keep you interested? Man, at the end of the day, man, you before, know. Before you identified as a toxic situation to, to leave. That's a great caveat to add to the situation. Um, well, with my number one passion having been predicated upon music, that was the first thing that thing was like incredible 
interest in music. Yeah. Somebody shows incredible interest in music, or when I was super duper young, it was like incredible interest in my music. Yeah. So a lot of situationships stem from someone being like a number one fan. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, which is important. It's always important to build whether you man or female, um, or whatever you identify as, um, to have the support of the person. Your, of your person that you're supposed to be is going to be your partner. But everything else was total. Everything that else. sucks, and that's Financial, and that's. All that, totally. It's funny you said it, just that cut dry, and uh, I have this friend. We always talk about things, and she always tells me, "You are so black and white with everything." I said it really is that simple, and the reason why I say it that way is, it, and um, after Dell telling off you is because when you say this right here was great, everything else was jacked up. Yeah. It re- that's the that's the <laughs> makings of a toxic relationship because something keeps you there to get the rest of the bag. And I ain't gonna bullshit you, man, you know. Um, it's by the grace of God, man, that, that I don't have children, you know what I'm saying? Because it, it has been it has been sex as well. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It kept it, it kept me in a situation because, you know, and that's the hardest thing. I mean, that's the exchange is there's a spell that comes with that. I was, that's what I was literally thinking in my head. Like biologically you're you're swapping and then there's the addiction. So if everything else is jacked up at the end of the day, yeah. You're performing. You're performing for a person through all of those other entities that we talked about mm-hmm. in this life of introducing someone to your lifestyle instead of dating. Yeah. And now you're so you're, like, to get back to the performing. You're performing for them through life to sustain this lifestyle that you can't sustain. You're stressed out, getting sick, busting your behind. Mm-hmm. In your mind, you're having private relationships that exist that, um, that are inclusive of comments like. Private in your mind yeah. about uh, man, I'm out here busting my ass doing this, and she ain't doing shit. And yeah. So you having you in a relationship with her, you in a relationship in your own mind insulting her, yeah. and then before you know it, you mentally checked out of the relationship. Physically, you acting like That's your stomach hurts to, si- to try I'm to separate the, the sex stuff. Yeah, I mean, like I literally started acting like I ain't feel good and didn't want to do that because I realized that was the last like hold that she had, that I had on me. Oh, okay. so you, are, you identified it as something that she was using to, to keep you interested. Yeah, you ain't gonna sustain me. You ain't gonna buy weed. You ain't gonna do that. So you know, later on the night when you in the bed and you you nudge me, mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore you and act like I don't feel like it. So now the next day you're feeling like like you ran out of all the tricks. Yeah, like you ran out of everything to pull this person back because that's the only thing you had. But if you introduce them to a lifestyle, yeah, you end up with a person that wants to go where you're. Enjoy living the way that you live, so the way you move, they they like the way you move because yeah. they move the same way. Right. And, and guess what? They're moving to the same place. Yeah. And even if they're not the same person, they're the th- you know the producer moves with an engineer. Yeah. The producer moves with a singer. Mm-hmm. Point guard moves with a shooting guard. Right. You know what I'm saying? The center just rebounded. They inbounded to a point guard. Right. right like right. we move together. So even if it's like you say, they complement one another. Right. Well, going back to the sexual hold, and like, I guess not even just sex, but I mean, I will we we'll use sex for the sake of the conversation. But um, when you're depressed, it's kind of like with people, um, all these studies that 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 circle around um, porn addiction or sexual addiction, or just uh, people that are serial daters when they should not be dating, they're looking for affection or just some form form of dopamine dopamine um, to to spice up their to counteract their something that to keep you around longer than you wanted to be or yeah, something. That'd be nice to know. It, then for the closure. Me at all. Did you ever get closure in the situation or you kinda of just left? Hell no. It was a whole Tyler Perry film, bro. Yeah. Like my mother was like, yo, you need to like she Indian gave me some some champion slippers when she was checking out her relate one morning my Jeep Wrangler wouldn't start. Yeah. And she was like, man, it's always something saying and like then you know my, my car started acting up so you know she's like questioning my manhood and my sustainability yeah. and my, my hunter gatherer stuff yeah yeah you know funny enough I'll fast forward and tell you that the minute that like after like I got her gone yeah my, 
car started. But yeah, so yeah. she said she was just the day we were separated. The day we were separated, my mother told me to, to when she went to Lenny's to go take them things back. She said, take her stuff and go take it into her mom's job and leave it there. And tell them that she told you to bring it there. And I was like, yo, like that's like so disrespectful to her mom's job and this and that and the third. Yeah. And she was telling me like, yo, when she was domestically violent, you think she was respecting you. So why are you operating oh, on a platform man. of integrity and values that the person you're dealing with does well, not yeah, use? I don't agree with that because a reason for somebody else to operate is not a reason for you to change yours. Yeah. But, you know what I'm saying, if somebody's like swiping at you with knobs and scimitars and, you know what I'm saying, and, I mean, if you're doing that and they're, and they're, and they're, and they're working with a gun or desert eagle or something, yeah, about you, about you need to change it. You need to change it up because you're just getting beat up and it's with some, by somebody in close proximity. Yeah. Drop the stuff and off. And what you're, what you're talking about, though, you're talking about physical abuse and mental abuse and, and mainly with men that receive the mental abuse side of things. It is, it's hard to talk about because other men, I guess, I don't want to just throw out the toxic masculinity thing, but it, it's really just sustained um, training of saying, oh, if you can't do this, you're less than a man, or you don't have everything in order, where it's like, really, you've just been pounded into the ground mentally, and uh, on top of the physical part, I've never endured the physical aspect of it, but the mental thing is something I'm just not foreign to me at all. And you really have to rebuild yourself. Because mm -hmm. that's what we run off of. We run off of, we run off of praise. Yeah. We run off of good job. Keep up the good work. Mm -hmm. um, even if you don't do well with the A's and the this and the that. Like, yeah. well, your son is so well-mannered. He's so respectful. He's so kind. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. people are constantly, like, doing Positive this for you. Yeah. yeah, and when you're in a, in a relationship, like, again, like I said again, they're close proximity and nothing is that nothing is uh, of those sorts of happening have you, have you identified opposite. your your love language yeah it's definitely words of affirmation okay what do you think they came from it, it, it came from your um, parents it came from the lack of it as a, as a child that's that's interesting well that's i i you know i read a lot of um of articles and, and that's one of the things that you know it always attributes to your love style of an adult yeah what you either got as a kid or what you didn't get enough of but i will say that i Conversations with all these people that don't know you, but I can't come in here and bullshit you, Joe. You can't do that. The people that you bring on this show, you know these people. They yeah. can't give you like this watered down, not from concentrated stuff. You <laughs> see, the, the, the show is great, it's fantastic, but you not buying that. Once the show is over and the camera's off and all that kind of stuff, yeah. and they, we ain't got to see y'all. I got to see Joe. I'll call him next week. He gonna be like, Yo, bro, come on, man. Why, why, why you feed me that? Boy? Show man, like well, we if I catch about well, you know, already. right? You, you know, if I catch it on the spot, I'm gonna say it on the spot, but at the same yeah. time, I'm protective of my people as well. So, and we appreciate I appreciate that because you, yeah, you know, ain't nothing worse than feeling naked in the streets and exposed, right? Right, right. You know what I'm yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a balance of having an honest conversation, but while at the same time, you may have a teaching moment, whether you're teaching me or I'm teaching you, you don't necessarily want to degrade somebody, um, or make them feel like they're inferior. Because the lesson won't get through, I, and that's another thing that men have to find out. What well, men have to find when communicating with other men. That's why a lot of men don't ask for help. Because a lot of times, I remember my dad used to do this to me. Well, well he never did it to me uh, as often as he did it to other people. But I saw him say something to a man that that was just asking a question. Um, he was probably a specialist in, in say something where um, white collar jobs, right? Whereas my dad was a mechanic. And this man would come to him and say, yeah, I don't know what's wrong with it. He would say, and then my dad would like drop the hammer on him because he didn't know, and he was in, um, he was questioning, he was like, uh, he would say, you are a man, why, why don't you know this? And then the other man would be like, well, I don't know. I, I don't know why I don't know. Because if you never get taught, or if you never run to the person that gives you the information and help you down the road to the uh, right information, you never learn. And it takes a long time to come up with good questions too. You got Sometimes you don't know. Go through stuff just to know what to ask somebody. Once you're even ready to ask, yeah. I, called, I called you last week trying to figure out like, 
and I, I've yet to be able to ask you one question, but it's like, I called you last week because I, rea I realized as of last week that because of the lack of school being around me and the lack of competitors being around me, that my co competitive spirit, my competitive nature to just be better than people and things, mm. I noticed it had faded because I'm in, I'm in the vehicle by myself. Oh, I'm isolation. work in the vehicle by yeah. myself. Isolation. At home, just myself. Yeah. I mean, of course, my fiance is there, but she's not a man. It's, diff it's different when iron sharpens iron, and yeah. that's when you, you need to be around. You need to be around the same type of animals to make sure you maintain your your edge. That's that's why I call specifically you and Rob. Y'all can see Robert on, on one of the previous podcasts. I don't know which per, uh, episode it is, but how he's very cordial, to Rob. These two dudes, <laughs> I'm telling you, when I think about the beasts in my phone book in the inner circle, these are the brothers. I'm that was the edit first. These are the niggas I call because <laughs> they're unapology, I'm unapolo unapologetically black. You know what I'm saying? I, I cut my locks off, and it, it, it was it was in the midst of another relationship. You know what I'm saying? My ex was getting cut my hair too. You know, I had two, I had two. They, 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 they ain't getting rid of this. But, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just, and so you gotta you gotta have those people in your circle, man. I digress, man. We were talking about your uh, your father and. Oh, well, this is just a little back to what you were saying. Like, well, sometimes you can't get an answer if you don't run into the problem. And what I was, uh, when I was looking at, like, different things about business or like, starting a show and just different things I want to do, there's never a perfect situation. Matter of fact, I gave it a, um, I listened to a book, an uh, audio book I just read. Um, um, my friend, David, uh, David Baldwin, um, that also known as Prophetic, he just came out with a, a book, Mind Over New how to make um and he was talking about getting placements in music <clears throat> he was saying in the course of the um, giving the different lessons of how people talk themselves out of good situations or even trying to pursue something that they should be pursuing whereas you know um, uh, paralysis by analysis there's never an ideal situation to start you just got to start so and then when we talk about business a lot of times you don't know what answers you need to formulate until you run into the problem. And the best entrepreneurs and the best businesses, it's all about problem solving. Like, yes, you see a problem, you see a, this is a product, this is what we do, this is what we sell, this is our brand, and you know, this has been established as this, that, and the other. But the thing is, what problem do you solve? McDonald's, what problem does it solve? Person that convenient, quick access to food. It may not be good food, mm -hmm. but it's, it, it's food. Yeah. And it's, it's location, location. Right. That's real a problem. Estate, yeah, real estate. <laughs> real estate. Yeah, man. Um, so, <laughs> speaking of McDonald's, did you see the Sweetie Meal? Sweetie Meal? Sweetie. No. Yeah, so you remember Travis Scott had a, had a meal, right? Right. Yeah, so Sweetie has a meal now. You'll I'm, so, I'm so glad that they're endorsing, endorsing us and we're a part of product. I feel a butt coming. <laughs> get, get, get to the point. We got us. Everything goes back to your values. So, yeah. Everything goes back to your values. And, you know, I go back all the way to like Andre 3000 and we can rewind back to him. Like, I mean, clearly though, by, by that time he had some sense of wealth. I'm not saying that sense of wealth um, helped him to, well, it's the truth. Money is a tool. And money is a tool that it, sh it when someone has it, it just shows you more of who that person is. The more of it you have, absolutely. And um, I mean, three stacks denied performing in the Super Bowl for like a million dollars or something like that. You know, he was already worth quite a bit and all those different things. I but think it was the money for him. But I'm exactly. I'm sorry, but I just, wanted to see Atlanta be Atlanta in the Super Bowl in Atlanta. But that's the same reason, that's the same thing that I question when I see a sweetie meal and the people with these meals. And the reason I'm saying it is because this is bullshit and it's not delivering any nutrition. Yeah. And we know it. It's just. But your values. Kanye, you know it. Kanye with the gap. How do you feel about that? Um, I don't really know, man. Personally, I, I, I don't know why I keep feeling, even though it's friends, there's like this healthy competition between him and he and uh. Virgil Abloh, like I feel like they're in competition.
competition with one another, even though they love and respect each other. I think anybody in Kanye's circle is, well, I think everybody is in competition with Kanye unless he, unless he looks up to you. But the only people I've seen him look up to has been Michael uh, Jackson. white people. Yeah, Michael Jackson is white and black. It makes perfect sense. Either dead or, I say dead or white people. Either genet either genetic or by acceptance. Oh, like he got drafted? Yeah. Like oh, they accept no. him. That the white hey, what Dave Chappelle said that the whites and the blacks got tiger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it's all depends. Like, come on, like there's there's no people that exist like that that have locks. Anybody that exists and has any very, very masculine attributes is never accepted by both sides because most white males what about the are rock? very feminine. The Rock is very strong and very big, but yeah. he also has no hair on his face at all, mm -hmm. and his hair is extremely low, yeah. and he's tailored and fitted everywhere he goes. Yeah. Everything from hip-hop has been has some sense of baggy. It's just changed like within the last 10 years, Okay. which is now, it, it, it means that, okay, now, it, it doesn't mean that now uh, that sense is being more accepted, it means that now everything European has been indoctrined into these black oh, aesthetics of art. Yeah. By these little, exactly fashion, by these little entities that are parts of it. Mm -hmm. Whether it's color, you know what I'm saying? Like very racially ambiguous women now are the most popular looks of every commercially marketed thing. Yeah. You go on Instagram, every woman that's got the blackish Tracy Ellis Ross hair, the Shahidi hair. They probably got 10,000, 10K followers because the world propagates that look as our new sense of beauty. But it also says, hey, we're America and we love people that are black and white. So white we pick something in the middle. So we pick something in the middle. Yeah. We didn't pick that blue, black African woman and modeler, even though like Gucci and Louis has like one yeah. per brand or whatever. But the diversity it's higher. Just, yeah, it's just the stuff that's it's, 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 it's visually apparent. Sensitive, but the gap. Yeah. Virgil used IKEA to mass manufacture some of his visions, but he didn't have to really be like front money and all that kind of stuff because it wasn't his own personal venture. Yeah. Like if you and I decide we want to drop a hundred T-shirts for you know what I'm saying a hundred people to watching watching the podcast and it's limited edition, we're coming up with the money to fund that deal. But Virgil Abloh uses IKEA. Kanye West uses the gap, but they both have off white and they both have Yeezy. Yeah. So I'm like, but then again, Virgil also has Louis and he's the artistic director. Right. But we also have the Louis Vuitton Don that doesn't get <laughs> that. So he's doing, he's starting this Metro So Do you think they have the same type of frenemy situation going on the way Kanye and Drake seem to have? I think it just plays out differently between them publicly because they're more prominent on microphones than the you know the public eye in that sense. But um, do you think? Wow, because you if you think about it, everybody that has been close to Kanye as well as far as the men go, and hell, even some of his ex ex girlfriends, namely uh, Amber Rose, they eventually become enemies of his. Mm. And I don't know if you attribute that to his artistic motivations. Um, evolutions, or it, or or even his mindset of him being diagnosed bipolar. I think internally, I think internally, perhaps in his spirit, I think it does. I think, but I think that's the most private thing, and that's the thing that you'll get through in the verses and the lyrics and all that kind of stuff in, in his pen. Yeah. Um. But I also think that like. It's definitely going to be articulated differently, like you said, because of the microphones. Or the Virgil Abloh is an architect, so right. it's like microphone versus pens and graph paper mm -hmm. turned clothing. So even if he's doing it, it's going to still sound like a whisper, and you have to like read through like what he's doing and how he's doing. It. Yeah. But I definitely think that because it's like of it messes through the hieroglyphics hier 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 versus someone with a microphone. Totally, it's in code. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think it comes through with friends. Because if you make so many enemies at a certain level, you're not going to go down. You're going to go up. And that's 
why you have to start buying real estate in Wyoming and owning all of this stuff and, and get up out of California and finally come to grips with like building your relationship with Christ for real. Building because at the end of the day, all you have is your spirit. Do you think that was genuine? Um, because I'm not the I'm definitely not the one to say. I would just say that you know his experience has probably led him to that place. I, I think I think he always had like. He's always been. He's always been has been connected to um, to spirituality and, and Christianity. Um, yeah. But what I okay, my conspiracy theory, and I'm the reason I started doing music was because of College Dropout. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I'm calling this down a good one. I'm like a bigger fan of Kanye than, than Drake. I was having a conversation with another producer friend of mine the other day. Mm-hmm. The the thing about it though is kind of I I would compare it to someone that. Namely, a pop singer. A pop singer that their popularity is fading, then they go country. Because they have a built in niche audience that's very supportive. But the moment you leave them, every they, they, they turn on you in the harshest of ways. I won't I won't say he's gonna turn his back on God and, and um, religion altogether, but I feel like that was a bit of his play in saying I have mental health issues, and um, I'm getting right with Christ. Because no one's singing a gospel song, a gospel song that the Apollo gets booed off stage. I that's my that's my take on it. I don't know how uh, the rest of the black community feels about it, but that's how I looked at it. Because he was catching so many, so much flack for all these different encounters with either people that we love and revere on different levels, and then things that he was just saying to us. It's like, where is the Kanye that we fell in love with? And you, you seem to lost yourself. But I don't know. But we don't know these people. We don't know enough next man's struggle. We don't know everyone's story, their journey. And if we're being honest, when you agree with somebody being rebellious, that it, it, you also have to understand that they have the same energy for things that you may not agree with. And that I think that would that's Kanye. So, 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 we we all clapped in applause for Kanye when George Bush don't care about black people. Revolutionary, he speak for us, speak for the people, people champion. He loses endorsements um, for speaking our truth of, of, for the people that don't have microphones and, and such a platform, right? Uh-huh. All right, same energy that took to say that phrase during a telethon. The same thing that said, I think slavery was a choice. It's just, are we not clapping? We were just talking about this earlier today. Same actually. energy. Flo, we were talking about this earlier today in the break room at work. Mm-hmm. And uh, because, I don't know if it was a commercial, but something came on TV where this dude said that Joe Biden has been um, incompetent for the first half of his political career. And then I had, then I had several men <coughs> Engaged with me in conversation, tell, reminding me of the freedom of speech in America that we have, and that's why it is this place that we live because of that. Right. Um, thus, also forgetting simultaneously that what we're hearing is an op- opinion. Mm-hmm. It's very easily easy to forget that things are opinion when people are saying them because when you read something, it sounds the same way. Certain platforms make think, uh, opinions look like facts. Mm-hmm. It was Good Morning America. Certain opinions make. <laughs> And uh, but the thing was is that I feel personally like the same things exist in communities, but the one deciphering word is the word respect. There's a lot of opinions I can have in your house right now because Mm -hmm. it's because it's not respectful for me to say them. Yeah, I'm not gonna say them because it's not integrity to be rocking like that. Yeah, and that and that's. And that goalpost get moves. It gets moved on every each person because we, is we we say we look at this picture. Mm-hmm. If we look at this picture and you say, isolated from me, what did you see? Is going to be different from the answer that I get. And that and when you talk about um, when you talk about respect and philosophies, that's what politics and 
politics and uh, personal philosophies uh, stand on. It's what you learned in your household growing up, the philosophies and like how we move and how they respond to this versus what I learned. And, and we meet outside and that's where we have our disagreements. Mm -hmm. And there's different levels of respect and I don't know, it's just different. That's where it, that's where the intersection comes to where sometimes it's a, you go by, I go by first or it's a crash. Yeah, yeah. I just, so yeah. going back to your break room, what was the conclusion? Or was, was there was there anybody to, to oppose that opinion? The conclusion was uh, buy a gun, have a stick in, in every <laughs> single room that you can get to quick to swing at something. That's okay. what the conclusion was. Um, <laughs> so the confidence they were talking about were was it about was it about, about gun control? It was about it was about um, nah it was it was about. <laughs> It was actually, I, was, I interrupted this guy. He was on the phone, and I didn't know what he was talking to anybody about. I was watching Good Morning America, and mm -hmm. he was at the coffee machine. Once he got off the phone, I was just surprised at the fact that somebody just in President Biden's house, right? Because yeah. this is America. This is not his house, right? Yeah. I was surprised that, you know, perhaps, see, the thing is, I don't know who, there's people out there that know, and they do the, the research and everything, but I don't know. I don't know what political group is backing Good America, more Good Morning America, versus what political party is backing Good Morning Atlanta, versus what political party is backing Channel Fox Two, News Channel and Five. CNN versus, yeah, yeah they basically have their own going versus. Yeah, they got their they got their own stuff. So meanwhile, while we're watching all of this, there's a million plus COVID and all these different things that are happening all over the place. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, like all this money being poured into these vaccinations and this, that, and the third, it's also furthering the agenda some political party whether or not what we're seeing is true or not because I can tell you right now there's 150 Dodge Challengers outside but that might just be me being the Dodge, the Dodge owner yeah. trying to heighten your to your bubble. yeah and make you invest in it but mm -hmm. I mean basically I said that and he started he was actually talking about rodents and stuff he was talking about rodents okay somebody next door old house going down family member taking care of the house rodents from their house are now starting to come over to oh, his yeah, house yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's talking about you know how he's got to deal with the situation and I'm talking about like yo I seen a snake outside of my mom's house mm -hmm. and so at this particular point in time now we're talking about manhood again mm -hmm. what every man should have in their home not to murder a person yeah. perhaps but to defend it but to defend themselves from that person or animal yeah we don't think about that we think about somebody breaking in our house all the time we're talking about gun control but what do you do when you left a window cracking a raccoons in your crib? Do you have a golf club, a baseball bat? Do you want to exert that type of effort, or do you just want to go ahead and get strapped? So now that I thought about it from that perspective, I don't agree with killing a person. But is it animal you know, cruelty if you know what I'm saying? Your house. Yeah, I'm defending my house from a, a beast. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where it went. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we <laughs> that, no, no. manhood to sticks and weapons. I mean, it's, it really gets down to the most primitive aspects of it, but that's really what manhood is. And, and um, if we strip away all the materialism, that's what it, that's what it goes back to: survival, um, the the ability to, to protect and provide, hunt, gather, and we got the biggest steak. <laughs> Yo, hey. or slingshot that evolved into air bows and arrows, and you know. So, have you, so keeping it political, have you seen anything um, pertaining to the um, employment crisis where a lot of people uh, are not working jobs and there um, there's a shortage of employees? Yeah, man, I've heard about that. Heard have you seen it? Like, yeah, man. you go to a place and like, damn, they slow. You're like, I oh, only got two people working here. Yeah, man, because everybody in the hood chilling on them PPP loans. Do you think that's what it is? Uh. Kind of like uh, idealism versus realism. Um, you 
you have welfare put in place based on idealistic solutions, but the loophole is there's always going to be people that find, oh, I can exploit this. Oh, yeah. And I think people what, in dollar store in college tell me, like, he pointed at a puddle. It's like, man, bro, you just texted him. My mom was there, man. That's a check right there. He's walking around the dollar store pointing at puddles, naming checks. Yep. So check, check. Just count them up. Mm -hmm. I can't grow. I, can't, I, 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 I don't, don't move like that, that way, but morally I can't do that either. No, nah, I can't, man. I, man, bro, I had, man, my manager told me, yo, you can cut out at 2.30 at 10 o'clock a.m. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in the car at 10.20, and I could not crank the car up until 2.30. Yeah. Because I don't roll like that. I just don't roll like that. I know. It doesn't matter what everybody else knows. I know. Yeah. You know, I know right now I told myself it's supposed to be per day. Every day. I yeah. skip two days and I feel like crap. I feel like the whole world knows. But I move I, I mean, move from that, a house to an apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, but that also speaks to your level of discipline and, uh, and accountability. I think a lot of people don't have that. And one of the things I really enjoy about you is your heightened sense of uh, self-awareness and emotional intelligence. That, that I won't say it's lacking just for the sake of propping you, your, you up or myself, but it feels as though other people don't hold themselves accountable or they don't have people in their lives that hold them accountable in which they can receive the message to get better, not necessarily for the sake of saying you're less than, you're not as good as this or that. I, I blame music and art and stuff, you know, because it's entertainment. resonating with what's going on and what your expectations are of yourself rather than expectations that others tell you. Yeah, man, like it don't it don't matter if everybody's wearing this and that and third and stuff like that. I have conversations with my fiance all the time about like Lizzo, yo, did you see did you have you heard the new Lizzo and Cardi B record? Rumors? Have you heard it? I think I've heard it. But I don't think I know Lizzo, and I think I've definitely heard Cardi B on a new song. I okay. definitely think I've heard it. You know who Lizzo is, right? Nah. Um, I don't know if you would call her a rapper or a singer. I would more so call her a singer that have, has the ability to rap. She's more like a hybrid, like a, I would say like a, like a Missy Elliott. Because I don't want to just, like from a, because I, you know, I respect artistry and I respect talent more so than anything, because she also plays the flute. But the thing that she really gets a lot of people going for is the, the, because she's a big girl and she twerks and she's like unapologetically doing the same things that like I guess all the IG the stereotypical uh, body body she brown skin mm -hmm. and then short hair no um, she has long hair she, she has long, long hair, hair. Yeah, okay I think about somebody hair. else um, but she but she's a big girl and she um. She really ropes a lot of people the wrong way, or she has. It's, it's basically the Kanye effect. You have people that feel very strongly in support of what you do, or people that are uh, very strongly against what you do. And she doesn't necessarily have people straggling stri the fence, which is also, you know, the benefits or the, the blessing and the curse of being in, in the public eye. If you have the ability to make people feel that way, that leads to success and, and, and um, extended amount of in, uh, interest. Because one thing I've seen with, you know, computers and algorithms. They don't know the difference between love and hate. All they see is, do you move numbers? Yeah, response. Is, yeah. is, there, is there a response back there? Yeah. But um, the, the, the basis of the song is, is surrounded about, um, there seems to be more of, I don't know if it's relatable, but you know how there's a lot of female rappers and they're talking, like, it's like giving a voice to a strip, like a strip culture. and men out of certain things and um, basically I would say sh showcasing the toxic traits that men have historically shown mm -hmm. um, but doing it under the guise of being feminine and yet callous and cold um, mm -hmm. unapologetically yeah because I'm smarter than you and you allow me to do it and so, you know, it's all, yeah it's always a competition but that I mean but basically I mean, if, we're, if I'm being fair, they're they're acting at, like men have historically behaved, but they're not. For me, I don't think they're. Not, I don't think it's right for men to do it, and I don't think it's and I think it's worse for women to do it because they compromise themselves more so than men. Because I think a woman compromising her body is more 
dangerous than a, a man doing it. Because it's detriment to the whole society. Say it again. It's detriment to the whole society. Why would you say that? Because you're you're the birth canal for which the entire That's world. That's what I was leading to. Yeah. yeah like but you're the manufacturer. Easy. You manufacture America, literally. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I was going to get at, too. And, that, and that's why I feel like the children suffer, because you choose certain partners to have children with, and the children suffer because you're not here a single mother. And I, I, feel, I feel torn at times talking about single mothers, because I was raised by a single mother, and I applaud my mother for the effort that she I applaud my mother for not going to the, to the strip club because <laughs> things got hard. And, That's, she, yes. and, and, and you get choices. All yeah. women get choices and strip all clubs get choices. Ones, strip clubs weren't born yesterday. One of the things I tell young guys all the time is I say that 70, 80 year old nigga that you scared to talk to and be real with, let him know that you go into that store and get that cigarette so you can roll, that, roll them trees up in your pocket. That dude was also. shells because we think that they all pastorly and they ain't done nothing and all that kind of stuff. You could complete it. The reason why they seem like they so sheltered is because you being so fake with them. But like you can talk I mean, I told I told you when I came here, 72 year old dude at the front of Quick Trip. Oh, he's freestyle. Freestyle, on you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, freestyle at the door. Yeah. And he paused and he did his little little thing. Yeah. Put his mask back on. I held the door. Gave it back to him. He and his wife went in the store. His wife was gone. You know, she's already she already know who this this character is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Already, she ain't bought. She gone. Sold her bottle. Yeah. But like, we don't. This is Roger being Roger. Yeah, I think I think that whole I, I think that whole situation is just it's BS, man. And the reason why it's BS is because that's the way you get wealthy in the music industry, which is why, like, you know, for example, like that's why I wanted. Smoke to win so bad and rhythm and flow because he he said one thing like you know they had him say like last words before they picked the winner of the entire rhythm and flow series on Netflix and one thing that he said was I didn't compromise my my integrity and my music and that's the problem everybody compromises their integrity and, and their music nobody stands for anything everybody stands for um everybody stands for lifestyles that can make them wealthy by making everybody else in the street look like a damn asshole. Because mm. that's what y'all look like. You wouldn't wear that, man. Like, everybody's wearing it now because it's being marketed. Mm. But at the same day, like, you know, me and my fiance talk about that all. We used to talk about it all the time. We don't talk about it no more like that at all. But I've already, like, in the early stages, I was like, yo, I got complete issues with certain things being worn. Not because I don't think you're beautiful and you shouldn't be able to show off your beauty, but it's because certain things. How did she receive that? Um, she completely got it, but at the same time, when you're talking to a strong black woman, no woman wants to feel like they're being controlled. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, if you don't place it in a box of control, but you may place it in a block box of uh, how can we have a healthy things that you do and don't do that provide for a healthy relationship. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like why would you do certain things that cause Man, somebody to want to? Things that I really enjoy talking. About. Yeah, like why? Why would you? Why would you want to pose a situation just from an outfit that puts me in a situation where I've got to get in a fight with somebody in the middle of a Kroger aisle? Dated in Atlanta. Case in point, um, I was on a date with a lady, and she liked to dress um, that very. What's the word I'm looking for? Fitting. No, no, not fitting. Beyond fitting, but suggestive. Like she, mm -hmm. she has large, very large breasts, and she likes to, she likes to show her girls off. She likes to show, she likes to show a lot of skin. And I said, all right, you wear that for yourself or you wear it to attract people? Which one is it? Or is it a little bit of both? She said, I do it for me. Because a lot of times when you present certain questions to, to certain people, they, they don't want a cop to saying, I'm doing this for the attention. I, I like to do this for me. OK, let's say you do that. But now you, have the, you find your partner in life, right? Mm -hmm. Now you put that man in a position where he's going to have to fight. Because someone's gonna disrespect you, and they're gonna just by if if that's your partner, disrespect to you is disrespect to the man, and the man has to step up and, and defend you, right? 
And then she's like, well, that shouldn't be a problem if his hands work. Okay, now this man got, <laughs> now you're going to beat this man. Because she was a, um, she's a, well, I ain't going to she would say she was. She is um, a professional. She she makes her money in the court world, does very well for herself. But the thing is, you talk about a man having a random fight in the street. Now they're, you know, as, a, as an adult, there's different consequences that come with that. Now I'm on probation. I got court cases. I got, I'm losing money because I can't, I'm got a, <laughs> I got to a, fight on aisle five because you wouldn't have your girls out. Hopefully, hopefully you, uh, hopefully you're in a situation where you get to go to court. Because the dude I saw when I was grabbing a beer out of the quick trip, he, he had a license to carry. He was carrying right through the store. I yeah. Like, I mean, we know who carries say so, you know. You know, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. Uh, I mean, they, you know, I mean, if you make it to court. Fight. Grown, yeah. grown men don't fight. They don't have time for that. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people. Or most people can't endure the, the idea of a loss. So, I mean, some people, you know. I, I like boxing, personally. I prefer to be training at a, at a gym and working on my hands and stuff. I had a lot of fun. I went to a club, boxing club, like twice. I used to go with, I went with, uh, to the club with my friend, um, and he trains, and I just kind of was there. It's just a, it's, it's, it's different, you know. Yeah. I remember being in high school, and I didn't even want to like boxing. This dude, man, he was getting fights all the time. Fights yeah. all the time. He was tall and lanky like me at the time. Saying they, they, I, I, I bit into the, pre, the peer pressure. You know, yeah. we had like a cut list and a, and a box Chevy, and somebody else brought their other old school, and we was like boxed in the woods on this side, so all four corner, corners closed, and they throw the boxing gloves at me, and the dudes start boxing at me, and, they, and I'm just like ducking and dodging everything he's throwing at me. Yeah. I don't was fight. That a, was that a real fight? No, nah, it was it was a real yeah it was a real boxing yeah. I was, mean like I guess, why, like, why yeah. I say did you guys have beef or you guys nah, it was just uh-huh. more like. Being like boys being destructive, like let's just yeah. let's, let's, but just like somebody that's like not gonna be embarrassed, yeah, like at all. So it went from all right, I'm just gonna throw a couple of hands, and then now I'm like, oh, now I gotta turn it up, and now you make me look bad, yeah, and that's what it kind of turned into. That's exactly what happened. He, okay. I let him throw stuff like couple crazy because I didn't, so. I personally didn't want, I, I was the person that just like really didn't want to say no mm-hmm. to the situation, but I really didn't want to be involved, yeah. So it definitely was peer and pressure it, for me. It's weird as a man because like you don't want to. Look pussy, right? But sometimes, like, all right, man, I, I, I guess I gotta go. I, I guess I gotta go fight now. He threw one. I moved my head, missed. Yeah. Threw another one. I moved my head the other direction. He missed. When he missed the second one, I threw a right. Hit him straight on. Hit him straight in, his, in, in on, the, on the left side of his face. Yeah. And at that point, it was over because he just looked. He looked defeated because number one, it, it wasn't and it wasn't like no long match or nothing. It was just like, we're not gonna do this. Yeah. I've been into the peer pressure. You already can't land anything that you've thrown. Mm-hmm. The first thing that I threw hit you. Score. And I'm not a fighter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think and you he's said known for fighting. Exactly. Yeah. I think you said last week, like, bro, like, it was either you or Rob, like, man. Somebody told me it's like, yo, like one or two of y'all was like, yo, man, like I, I ain't no tough guy, you know what I'm saying? Like that was Rob. I can see Rob saying that. Like mm-hmm. y'all both are two big old dudes. <laughs> y'all are big dudes. Like country you know what I'm boys, saying? Country boys. And it's like, yeah, and it's like, it's like at the end of the day, like you're you, to the world, you're everything. You're everything that you're not. You're totally like all those dudes. But it's like at the end of the day, like, bro, you you pulled me into this situation. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to be in this situation. Yeah, well, we're and here I'm, now. And I'm embarrassing you. Yeah. And I don't want to continue to embarrass you because I didn't even want to be here in the first place. Right. Hence. Lady, stop wearing that because I don't want to even have to do anything. How long did you have to have that conversation um, to get that point across? It it uh it didn't have to have it didn't. It, I'm thinking about examples where she perhaps would have worn certain stuff and it felt a certain type of way, and there weren't those types of things. Um, because simultaneously, while I'm talking about those things, I'm going to church together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Go to credit good and seminar. Saying go to financial uh, uh, real estate together, go to the gym together. So we're working together in like eight, nine different capacities. So when I mention this other one, it just seems like everything else is on one accord. Like my desire for us to be living this element of of, 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 of life is bringing so a certain level of value. L- let me let me um, see if I can comment on that. So so I've seen women do this too, where they might have a form fitting shirt on, um, mm-hmm. like a or something, right? That stops at the waist or a crop top. Mm-hmm. And then you throw that on with leggings. 
you got that shape, it's going it's everything is being shown. Right. So I've also seen the girl the compromise where they well want the attention, they take a jacket, tie around their waist, or right. they'll wear something flowing that covers up the leggings, same leggings that right. will give them all that attention, going to the gas station, going to the grocery store, going wherever they're going. But that one modification would change the whole interaction of the night. That's exactly what my fiance does. Yeah. She, she might wear the leggings, but she'll wear she'll wear that that she'll wear that sundress mm -hmm. that you know what I'm saying? You can see all of somebody's booty cheeks moving and dancing under their dress or something like that. She'll wear that. She'll wear that sundress, but then she'll have the leggings up under it so that you know what I'm saying. Yeah, Everything is stationary. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, stationary. yeah. But like, what's going on at the time is like, you know, she's mod she's making modifications to a very thottish outfit. Yeah. But it, but it, when you make modifications to that outfit. It, turns into a woman mm. wearing clothes instead of someone that's I thirsty. I don't need another woman here to counteract this point because it's only it me great. agree with me, huh? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, I mean because they're, I, well, you know, we have different people in the community where you might have women that are, you know, give you the hand clap, you know, that's why she engaged and y'all getting married, and then you have the other girl who may have a man that doesn't mind that. And they're like, uh, uh see, my guy don't do sex with Rod Z, and you, I need. There's so many men that don't say nothing. There, there's so many men that don't say nothing. They encourage it. They don't say nothing about. It. I see it all the time, and it's like, it's, it's, it's a lot of times it's like younger dude. It's it appears to be younger dudes. Mm -hmm. It appears to be younger dudes, and they look like they're walking around with like the the the, the, the Cardi B mini me. You know what I'm saying? Like crop top. I mean, but they want leggings, that, but, but easy slides. But a lot of those men. Or Boys, I was gonna say that too, um, but but a lot of the times that is a that is a man's version of peacocking. Like, tell me more. You, like sh like peacocking, um, like peacock show oh, their the feathers, feathers to, show yeah, their feathers. Like, like the woman is the biggest representation of a man um, when you when you you step out. So that um, the thing about a woman, and I and I you know I say this all the time. She could be your biggest, greatest asset and also your greatest uh, weakness, depending on you know where you guys are and what you guys do for each other. Um, you, I mean, you can speak to this yourself. I mean, your your first your, your first relationship that we're talking about versus the one you're, you're in right now. I'm Man. pretty sure you can have the same conversations and have two different outcomes, but it speaks to where you are in life and where they are in life and where you guys have met at the intersection and how that conversation goes. Man, my favorite thing to tell any guy that's with a lady that I, I can perceive the element of them wanting to have the best relationship that they want, and they, they just look like they're trying. Yeah. Man, put her on game. Put her on everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm interested in, in putting Shinoa in boxing class. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, she got, like, like Nick and Ass. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like jab, jab. Oh, that's the clip that I'm leaving the episode with. Brap. Jab, jab, jab. <laughs> hey, jab, jab, hook, uppercut. Yeah, man. And, and she on like TikTok, on, mm -hmm. on, on, on TikTok, that's a, um, that's a pop, pop, and a heat, heat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you saying? She like kicking us, so you going to do MMA? No, I'm saying that she, after she come out of boxing class with the, with the like, she, for me, she going to get the, the jab, jab, hook, yeah. uppercut. Yeah, yeah. But then, like, when she comes with her stuff, that means she's got an extended combo because she's in the kickboxing. Okay. So the point is, if you give the give the woman everything you have, and then like you said, she's the better she's the better version. You know what I'm saying? Like she's, I, I feel that man. Like they're 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 really the powerhouses. We we just we're really just supporting them and, and, and nourishing them because at the end of the day, man, it's really like you're just um, you're really no matter what stage the lady is in, the woman is in, you're still taking care of a pregnant woman that got your baby in her, even if it ain't there yet. So that's like how you should approach her. Well, you do, man. That's how you gotta approach her, because at the end of the day, like everything that you're giving to her, you're also giving it to your child, because she's she's carrying around the oven. Like, you gotta keep the oven clean. You want, you want it to, you know what I'm saying? Like, be soft so when the baby's in there can lay down and all that other kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but you gotta approach. I, not you gotta approach, because I don't like telling nobody what to do, but just the, the philosophy of approaching, you know, a woman like she's, you know, like like she's soft down bedding, but at the 
same time approaching her like she's your mother, but at the same time, and, and, and you have to do all of these approaches, whether or not they act like it or not. You know, treat them like the person that they, treat them like the person that they, that they, that they could be and then become that person. But if you treat them like the person that they are, they'll remain that and less. You know what I'm saying? Treat her like a hood book and she'll always be a book. You know what I'm saying? But if you treat her like, you treat a woman like she's, you know what I'm saying, uh, pastor's first lady or the you know what I'm saying or like she's auntie Michelle Obama you know what yeah. I'm saying then, then perhaps perhaps she won't be carrying herself like she's the th- magic city <laughs> but at the same time like they are they even they are auntie Michelle Obama at the end of the day it just yeah. is that they're compromising because either they don't want to use patience to get to that financial place that they really want to get to yeah. or they're pimping these different markets, you know what I'm saying, whether it's the music market, whether it's the, I'm a, you know what I'm saying, like, I bet you, I bet you, bro, when you go, I bet you when you shut down and you go and hang out, mm-hmm. Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, they do not be that person. Nah, nah, I mean, it's, it's the forms of entertainment, you don't need patience. Um, I'm going to close. Yes, sir. I'm going to close, because you and I, you know, we can easily talk for about three, four hours, but um, next thing that's on your to-do list, what is, what is it, besides the that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> I know my people. That's exactly. My, my people. That's exactly what I was thinking. Okay. Um, no, we can go with that. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, definitely, man. It's oh well. I'll be. I'll be. I added one thing to the list earlier today. What was and, that? Um, it was um, my fiance and I. We talked. We talked about not ignoring God's gifts. And what that means is that it means that it means that. singing falsetto all the time. Like now to be a great male singer, you have to you have to sing like I think a girl. Like going back to that show, like, yeah. yeah, you gotta sing like a girl. Yeah. Yeah. You can't sing like, you know what I'm saying? And so okay, so the thing on the list is for me to start doing um voice covers uh, of other people's songs um, that I like that speak to me, learning the songs and getting back into singing, you know, singing more, you know, so I'm, I think I wanna learn um I think I want to learn, and we, you know, we know the songs pretty well already. But I think I want to learn um, uh, Anita Baker's uh, "Sweet Love." I think I want to cover that song, and you know, get on that track. You know, with all my heart, I love you, baby. Stay with mm-hmm. me, and you will see my heart. Excuse me. Arms will hold you. You know, so like, and the thing is, it's like Bob Dylan told. And I think that kind of speaks to like the dopeness of even Bob Dylan and Jimi Hendrix, like not the best singers, but if you can project emotion and then you have other attributes that hold that make up for the things that you don't have in that part, you get the icon. But it is, man. The, but if you tune the instrument, an instrument will make you be in tune. Hey, we're gonna end it right there. Patrick Gregory, Gregory Daniels. Blow Arts. Joe. <laughs> Love Joe. You the only person to call me that. I'm telling it's you. It's cool. It's cool. Y'all want to see him when he go to the boxing gym and once he start training and all that. I'm a lover, not a fighter. That's, that's <laughs> what all the big guys say. Yeah, that's true. My, I think I heard Mike Tyson say that before. I'm a lover, not a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> they want to say it too. Live from the Live Room Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Peace. You said Mayweather said too?
Joseph got the vibe. Money on my mind, I be on my own.